back to work. Go on. Hey everybody, Gears here with a final wrap up video on the Vibro Axe. This is the complete set, all broken apart, with uh, special options way up at the top and over in the bottomish right. The paint probably looks black, but in actuality it's a slew of half empty, half full Alclad bottles that I had laying around to try and get a fairly uniform look across as much of the piece as I could. Some really nice texturing in here. So there is no actual black. There's Alclad stainless steel, magnesium, uh, aircraft aluminum. What else? What are some of like the burnt metals? The jet exhaust, perhaps a little of that. Of course, something like this is actual brown and yellow enamels, which are several layers below all of this. This has been sanded down just a little, as you can see by these sanding marks here. So there are a lot of subtle textures all around and that's essentially all due to the layering of the paint and the way that's done. Yeah, nice the way the colors just flipped right there, huh? Having this as copper shows up through the vents as a little bit of a sparkle, which is an interesting effect. That was specifically at my wife's request that it be something like that. Otherwise, like a metallic blue or a metallic red would have been good as well. Now when you're going for weathering, in this case this is really aging, there's no actual dirt passes on this that would sim simulate grime or buildup of any kind. This is all just clean age, essentially. And the only way to get that is really to build up all the layers. Sand them down in between and just keep going and going. It's a timely process. Definitely involves a lot of paint. You just can't dry brush this sort of thing into uh, existence. It's really got to be done the way nature does it, which is build up, scrape down, build up, scrape down. Nice shine. So the edge of the blade is actually more of a concentration of a new color that Alclad had. It was like black chrome or... I can't quite remember, maybe RAF silver, reflective silver, one of those, but I mostly highlighted that just along the edge here, which is why it has a bit more shine than uh, all the rest of it. These two pieces here are plastic and they are delicate. It turns out I just broke this one right in here where you can see that, but from any given distance. It's really not going to be too noticeable, and certainly these could be better overall anyway. So I'm just about to put this together, so uh, I figured I may as well get that on camera. So the order doesn't actually matter too much. I do have everything marked, so this is the bottom of the lower, the side goes up kind of thing. And the tape here essentially gives it the grip it needs. And the lines here are the marks for how far it should go in so that I know that it's gotten into place. So now the lower section is ready. So let's attach that to the center section. Nice and easy. Into that we'll get the upper tube.
onto which slots the hair dryer. So I don't have any keys to keep things in their proper place that just needs to be done manually. The bottom of course doesn't matter. Now it does of course have to have a good fit in the center. However, this guy here should face here, which is backwards to this guy here. And the blade goes in just like that. And then finally, slot this in here and rotate like that automatically sticks nice oh and almost finally I should have said same for this one here slot it in put it over done so from top to bottom a PVC tube with a wooden dowel inside a modern Melnor water bubble retrofitted to sort of look like the old original one from the 80s. I think there's 22 drits, uh, 1.5 inch outer diameter, 1.1 inch inner diameter. I'll have to check the sizes on those. Those are encapsulated by heat shrink. The PVC tube splits there, works its way all the way up to the next set of Dritz rings, followed by the Kenner hand solo blaster part. Moving up from there, the custom tube, the custom screw bit, the Gillette Supermax hair dryer, custom doodad here for whatever that does, the blade itself made out of five sheets of plexiglass and carved to shape, another plastic tube heading out of the sharpie casing which is stuck around a metal thing and another metal thing with some aluminum tubes and stuff back over here we're back to the Dritz rings a Darth Vader chest rod a uh, crud what's the name of those right there it's totally slipping my mind well, unfortunately to get far enough back to see this thing you really got to be far away Oh yeah, but what about these parts here? Let's check those out. This guy slides into here. So this guy wiggles into here. So, and just a little more. It does get caught in places, so you got to watch it and be careful. There we go. Out of the bag of frilly yellow and red, grab a pinch, jam it in the top, over here, pull this guy aside, pull this out, this one's a tight fit. Put it back into place. Right there. And. And now introducing the world's first Vibroax Tiki Torch.